Uh, we'll now have our education session. Uh, Nancy, if you could introduce that for us. We'd um, I'd be very happy to. Our speaker this evening is Brian Smith, MD. He received his medical degree from the University of Washington School of Medicine in Seattle and completed his anesthesiology residency at Stanford University. Following residency, Dr. Smith did an anesthesia research fellowship at Stanford, working in simulation and human factors and patient safety. He is certified with the American Board of Anesthesiology, the National Board of Echocardiography, and is a member of both the California and American Society of Anesthesiologists, as well as the Society of Cardiovascular Anesthesiologists. He's the medical director and chairman of anesthesiology here at Washington Hospital and is a partner in Northern California Anesthesia Associates. He's also active in several hospital and administrative um, committees. We also have available for backup, um, depending on what questions are asked, Mintu Denon, who's a PharmD and head of our pharmacy, and also our chief of staff, Dr. Peter Lunny. This topic, acetaminophen overuse, is one that could not be more critical to the general public. It appears in so many different drugs that are both over the counter and prescribed um, that most people aren't aware of, that it's very easy for it to result in toxicity, and I've been told it's the number one reason for liver failure in this country. So with that, I'd like to hand the program over um, to Dr. Smith. Thank you, Ms. Barber. Um, uh, so Ms. Den and, and uh, Dr. Lenny both helped me uh, put this uh, talk together, but I wound up uh, at the microphone here. Um, uh, this is a really important uh, uh, topic, and uh, it turns out people uh, haven't really gotten the news about it, so uh, we wanted to take a few moments and, uh, and alert you about it. Um, there's something that we all have in our home uh, that is uh, potentially lethal uh, medication, and people don't really realize uh, what the potential risk is. Um, it looks like there are about 20 or so accidental overdoses that lead to death um, uh, from acetaminophen in the U.S. every year. So uh, it's a big problem. Uh, medication is used a lot. This is uh, acetaminophen is uh, what we usually call Tylenol, but it's in a whole lot of other different things. 25 billion doses sold since 1950, so we take this medicine a lot. Um, it's been marketed very successfully as a safe alternative to aspirin. Uh, in 1986, there were some uh, really well-publicized uh, scares about uh, giving aspirin to kids uh, with Rice syndrome, and uh, so uh, Tylenol is marketed as a safe alternative, and it's been uh, very popular ever since then. Um, from a pharmacology perspective, it's a medicine with something we call a narrow therapeutic index, and basically that means that uh, the dose you need to take to get a good effect is really pretty close to the toxic dose. So uh, we like meds that, uh, you know, the dose that uh, helps you is uh, much, much, much smaller than the dose that can hurt you, and this one's relatively narrow. Um, it's the leading cause of both accidental and intentional hepatic failure. So uh, overdoses can be accidental or intentional. Obviously, a hepatic failure is uh, your liver basically dies, and uh, you can die from this or need to get a transplant. Um, uh, between November and May each year, there are about a billion colds in this country. Um, so it's very common uh, to take over the counter remedies for that. And uh, most of those medicines contain multiple uh, uh, pharmacologic agents, but almost all of them contain acetaminophen. So it's pretty easy to accidentally get more than one. Um, it's uh, thought to be benign, and it's kind of a hidden ingredient in many of those drug combinations. And so I wanted to take kind of a look at uh, what might contain acetaminophen. And uh, if you look up and down the list here, you probably see two or three of your favorite cold remedies. And uh, these are all prescription medicines that also contain it. So it's super incredibly common. And um, they actually, if you sit down and count it up, there's over 600 over-the-counter medications sold in the United States and different names coming from other countries as well um, and prescription medicines that contain this. Sometimes to even further confuse things, it's not labeled acetaminophen or Tylenol, but it's uh, APAP or ACET. It's uh, abbreviated, so it can kind of further confuse you. Um, 
Uh, this is sort of a complicated slide, but basically it's a study where we asked people, three different uh, investigators asked people, does this medicine contain acetaminophen? And if you ask them, does Tylenol contain acetaminophen? Uh, roughly 50% of people knew that it did. All these other medicines, uh, very few knew that it did. Some of these don't contain acetaminophen, and people thought they did. And some of them do, and very few, for example, uh, Lorsat or Vicodin uh, does contain uh, potentially large dose of acetaminophen, and less than 15% of people knew that it was in there. Um, this is from the American Association of uh, Poison Control Centers, and uh, in a study uh, that looked at eight years of data, there were 13,000 cases of Tylenol overdose or potential overdose reported to them. 1,200 of those patients died. About 160 or so were accidental overdoses. and. Uh, uh, about 200,000 people hospitalized or seen in the emergency room for that, so common problem. Second most common uh, cause of liver failure requiring a transplant, and most of the cases requiring transplant involved unintentional overdoses, so these aren't all uh, intentional medicine overdoses, they're accidental ones quite often. Um, the things that put you at increased risk for this, we're not recommending that you know, no one ever take this medicine, but uh, you need to be aware of uh, what the risks are and what you're taking. Taking more than the prescribed dose is obviously a problem. Taking it too often or uh, continuing it for too long. Uh, as we discussed, taking more than one medication that uh, contains acetaminophen. Um, alcohol use along with acetaminophen is particularly risky because uh, al alcohol changes the way your liver uh, metabolizes medicines. and uh, can result in a buildup of a, a toxic metabolite of acetaminophen, people whose livers are already damaged or at increased risk. And there are a few other kinds of medicines that uh, also can increase the risk of Tylenol overdose, uh, medicines for tuberculosis infections and uh, a couple of different medicines uh, that are anti-seizure medicines. Um, if you were to get an overdose, this is another thing that makes it risky. There's not a ton of obvious symptoms, and many of them don't start real early. So in the first 24 hours, you might have nausea or abdominal pain or vomiting. Those might be some of the kinds of problems that you know, you're know you taking Tylenol for, so you might not even notice that. Um, in stage two, maybe just a tender liver. So uh, in the right upper quadrant of your abdomen, you might be sore, and that's all you might notice for a couple of days. And then in stage three, between two and four days, uh, you get very sick and potentially die. There's an antidote for Tylenol toxicity, but it works better the sooner you take it. And because there's not very many signs early on, it's hard to get it into people. Paradoxically, if people intentionally overdose, often they come to our attention sooner and we can get the antidote in and uh, help them out. If they accidentally overdose, often we don't find out about it until they're in stage three on um, damage. Um, so the FDA stepped in and uh, made a public warning and also several regulatory changes to help uh, decrease the chance of this um, acting for both consumers and uh, to hospitals. Um, but a Princeton survey showed that uh, less than half of the population was uh, aware of that even after the uh, pretty well publicized warnings. It was on the, uh, the cover of some magazines and a lot of uh, TV news shows. Um, so just to talk a little bit about how you should take it, um, dosing in kids is difficult because it's on a per weight basis, so you've got to read the label very carefully, but for the, for the pharmacists here, it's 10 to 15 milligrams per kilogram per dose in kids. Um, uh, in adults, uh, they recommend between 325 and 1,000 milligrams every four to six hours. Uh, when the medication was first approved, the daily maximum dose adult for adults was 5,000 milligrams, and uh, this most recent FDA change lowered that to 3,000 milligrams, so a pretty significant reduction in the total daily dose. Um, they made some other uh, recommendations to help consumers understand, and uh, so they want to have the manufacturer spell out acetaminophen in its entirety on the label. Um, they want to make uh, the 325 milligram dose the only strength you can get without a prescription, so no more maximum strength 500 milligram doses over the counter. And uh, to include a warning about alcohol use and uh, to uh, narrow down to just one concentration for uh, kids' doses, so it's not so confusing trying to figure out how much to give your kids. Um, from the hospital perspective, uh, uh, 
at the direction of Ms. Denon, we already uh, removed the 500 milligram preparations of acetaminophen uh, from our stock and replaced in the formulary in all of our uh, orders uh, 325 milligram doses instead. We have a variety of different combination medications that contain acetaminophen, so we changed all those to 325 as well. And we set our in-hospital daily limit to 3,000 milligrams. And then our uh, new uh, EMR um, computer physician order entry system allows us to keep track of the total daily dose. So there's an alert on the medication record about uh, Tylenol containing medicines and the computer actually tracks how much people get from all sources so it adds up if people are on more than one medicine with acetaminophen it keeps track of how much they're getting and uh, gives us an alert if it's going to be too much. So on the consumer side uh, you don't have a computer system and uh, a pharmacologist to help you so the uh, the plan is to try to keep track of your total daily dose on um, Beware of the interactions with other medicines that you have from, and uh, alcohol use. Uh, I encourage you to ask your provider about any questions that you might have and find out what are your ingredients in all the medicines that you're taking. So uh, I know this thing's hard to read, but you've got to got to uh, dig in and find out where where's the Tylenol and how much is in there, um, and keep track of how often you take it. There's. Uh, uh, McNeil Pharmaceuticals that uh, I think originally uh, um, marketed Tylenol has a kind of a nifty website I thought I would show on um, www.getreliefresponsibly.com um, but it, it actually works pretty well you can uh, type in all of your medicines on it and uh, it will give you the acetaminophen content in each one of them. So you can just go down your list of uh, medications that you get or give to your physician and uh, find out if more than one of them over, over the counter and prescription medicines and you can kind of figure out what your total daily dose of acetaminophen and uh, it looks on the back end to see uh, what are the ingredients there. So I recommend checking that out if you, uh, if you have the opportunity to have any questions. I, I have a question about how would this affect um, our seniors? Does it have a greater effect on them as, as they age, I mean in the 80s and 90s? Anybody who has a potentially impaired liver function would be at increased risk. And so there are a few uh, disease processes that are associated with age. Um, and uh, our older patients are more fragile because of their other comorbidities as well. So if they were to get uh, liver toxicity from this, uh, it would be harder to recover from. And uh, they'd probably be less likely to be able to get a transplant if they did have the worst uh, case scenario. So um, from that perspective, yes. But um, the liver functions pretty well. Uh, if, if there's not a disease process going on, uh, liver functions pretty preserved as you age. As okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. how, right. how successful are liver transplants? I don't know the answer to that question. I was just curious. They can be very successful, but they're problematic. I mean, it's the best thing to do is to try to avoid it. Uh, and I think, it's, uh, I think it's great that you made this presentation. I think this is really a, an important public health uh, issue. And I'm, and I'm glad that the FDA finally took action to uh, change the total daily dose and to require the changes in the formulation of the medications. Uh, that, that action was long overdue. The question I have for you, Brian, is uh, what did the FDA do with respect to making it clear to people who are taking these medications, especially the combo medications, the, uh, the cold and flu preparations which have the antihistamine, the decongestants, the mucolytic, and as, uh, with the acetaminophen thrown in as well. What did they do to make it clear on the front of the package that this medication has acetaminophen? I don't think there's any uh, labeling so no requirements for the No specific requirements front. yet. You've got to get out your, get out your, uh, your magnifying glass, your right. and uh, have a look at the back of those things. Still, at least they're writing the whole word out, 
on, but still there's a big, uh, you know, knowledge gap because you have to know what that is. And most people don't, you know, only half the people knew that Tylenol and acetaminophen are the same thing. Right. So the biggest issues are double dosing, taking Tylenol along with another cold or flu preparation which contains it. The other thing which is a risk factor is the uh, liquid formulations of the cold and flu preparations where you get to pour out your dose into a little cup. Um, some people aren't as responsible in measuring it out. They may just take a swig here and there. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really bad way to take those medications and is un unsafe. So I would encourage people who are taking the liquid formulation of medications to strictly measure it out. Um, but I think this is something that deserves a lot more uh, public attention. And the number to remember is 3,000 milligrams a day. I'd just like to add that um, the most common, to, here at the hospital, we've limited it to 325 milligrams per dose. But the most common um, dosages that people have in their homes are the 500 and the 650 milligrams. So it takes very few tablets to achieve that 3,000 milligram maximum recommended dose. Right. It's only if of the Tylenol extra strength, which are 500 milligrams each, it's, it's only six tablets. And then mm -hmm. Tylenol arthritis is 650 milligrams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there evidence for problems if you continue that, you know, the 3,000 a day for a week? They didn't make a uh, strict limitation. Um, I think likely you'd be okay. Good. Thank you very much, Did Dr. You, Smith. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Two things. Uh, one, you, you mentioned about the pediatric uh, mm -hmm. dosing. Uh, because the drops used to be about five times more concentrated than the liquid. And thank God, about six months ago, they have taken that off the shelf. That was going to be uniform. It's just 160 milligrams per teaspoon, which is 5 ml. Uh, before, it was uh, 80 milligrams per 0.8 ml <coughs> drops. And, you know, I think people are really confused. I'm a physician, and when I got a sick kid, I was rather confused by the different concentrations of Tylenol in infant versus children's yeah. liquid preparations. So they have pulled that off the table, and so it's uniform now. It's only 160 milligrams per teaspoon. The other thing is, you know, for someone who's on long-term Tylenol, do we do monitoring of liver enzymes like INH and things like that? I mean, INH also, which is used for tuberculosis, uh, you know, we always kind of follow them every two months or three months with some liver enzyme studies. Do we do that? I'm not familiar with any uh, yeah. protocols for that, so I don't know if it would be cost effective or not, but it might not be a bad idea. In particular, if you had somebody with some uh, liver insufficiency, some pre-existing liver condition as well, and also was taking some acetaminophen-containing preparation. Thank you again. Sure. I'm sure that the majority of us here are all in the era where we thought Tylenol, that's the safe one. Anyway, thank you very much.